Hey there, welcome to Breakfast with Mark Daniels on this Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020. And consider this the first step out of the deep freeze. Long Island weather, we will climb above freezing today. And it's about time too, with highs about 38. Tomorrow's high about 45. Friday also about 45. Nighttime lows between 25 and 35. There's another chance of rain on Saturday. Recapping from yesterday, whether you prefer to work in an office or work at home, Jerry said, I'd much rather work in the office. Interaction with people is good. Perry, on the other hand, said he's been working from home for about 15 years and loving it. Obviously, the benefit of cost saving $350 a month on a Long Island Railroad ticket, dry cleaning bills, and lunches out saves him even more cash. He says he doesn't miss the distractions in the office. It seems everybody wants to know how your weekend was or chat about a Yankee win or a frustrating jet loss. That's just not for him. Plus, working from home gives him a lot more time with his kids. Thanks for your comments. You can also reach us at breakfastwithmarkdaniels at gmail.com. Well, it's official now. Former Yankee Derek Jeter is officially in the Baseball Hall of Fame. And predictions were he would get 100% of the votes. With 397 ballots cast, only one said no. How could you say no to Derek Jeter? He's the perfect baseball player. Anyway, the only person to receive a unanimous vote when inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame was Mariano Rivera in 2019. Mr. November, the captain, the ultimate Yankee, Derek Jeter, congratulations. So have you ever been to a Super Bowl game? It's probably the biggest sporting event on the calendar. And with that said, Super Bowl tickets have just started to sell at $5,200 per seat in the cheap seats to over $16,000 per seat in the best seats. Not to mention transportation costs, hotel costs, and hey, you got to eat something, right? And don't forget those Super Bowl souvenirs. I mean, that's literally nuts. It makes any Broadway ticket look cheap. If you have that kind of money to throw around, then your new friend, Mark Daniels, would like to go with you. So my day started off with a bang today, and I wondered if this ever happened to you. I knew that my wife had a really busy day coming up. She had to do this, talk to that one, this account, that person, blah, 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 blah. blah. So I knew when she was getting ready that I would just give her as much space as humanly possible without leaving the house. When she was ready, she came charging downstairs holding two of those like Yeti things for her water, which I guess she had to refill. And she had her purse. She had an iPad. Uh, The coat was like draped around her neck. She was a mess. Anyway, she had gathered all of her stuff up and was ready to go out the door. Me being smart, I stayed clear. Actually, I went into another room until it was okay and safe to kiss her goodbye. And a couple of minutes passed when she asked the question no one wants to hear asked, Have you seen my keys? At that very second, I knew we were in trouble and that this was probably not going to be resolved right away. And I immediately thought that, well, I don't drive your car, so that's really not a fair question to me. I'll just bounce the question back to you. I don't know. Where are your keys? You came home with the car last night, so they must be somewhere. And by the way, her car has one of those key fobs where there's no key to turn, as long as you have the key with you inside the car, you push a button to start it and you push a button to turn it off. Key fobs, worst invention ever. Normal car keys, you have to turn the car off with your hand, pull the key out. Now it's in your hand, so you have some sort of a mental note as to where they are that you put them in your purse or you bring them in and you put them on the key ring in your house. With the key fob, you just push that button and get out of the car. Who cares where the key is? It would have been nice if I could track where the keys were by having it I don't know, make some sort of a sound like find my iPhone. But no, that wasn't happening either. So since there was not much time for her to look for it, she took the spare key and left. Now we're down to one key, that's spare. If she loses that, well, then we really don't have a car, do we? My daughter and I literally ripped the house apart, searched under every couch cushion. We searched in the freezer. We searched in the pantry. We even checked every single bathroom. I mean, you never know. All those stupid places that sometimes you put stuff and you forget you put them there. The one thing I didn't want to do was have to make an appointment with the dealer to go back there to get a new key fob for about two or three hundred dollars. My last resort, the garbage. So I put on a pair of surgical gloves. Don't ask me why we have those in my house, but we do and started weeding through the trash. 
I plowed through eggshells, coffee grinds, paper plates, paper cups, an empty box of Special K, and lo and behold, underneath the box of Special K were her car keys. A little yucky at first, but after cleaning it off, it seemed to work just fine. I still haven't figured out how they actually got in the garbage. All I can remember is that she came home from grocery shopping and she was cleaning off the table. And as she was taking all the stuff off the table, she threw it in the garbage and must have scooped up her keys in the process. Listen, I know we all lose things and I'm certainly not perfect. But when I come home, my keys and my wallet and anything else that's important to me go in one spot. That's the first thing I do. And I say to myself, your keys are here. Sort of make a mental note of it. I know it's a little type A, but... It works. So the lesson learned here is to save time in the future if someone loses something in my house. The first place I'm going to start looking is the garbage. And given the fact that we've thrown out Christmas presents in the Christmas trash and keys in the non-Christmas trash, I would say two things. Number one, we have a problem in our family about throwing things out. And number two, if you ever go through my trash, chances are there's something valuable in there. Now on to Wednesdays, what's that noise? I'm going to play a little bit of a noise, and all you have to do is tell me what the noise is. Here we go. That's Wednesdays, what's that noise? You could leave your answers on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. So I got to talking with a friend the other day, and they said one of the reasons they miss living at home was because their mom used to make the very best bangers and mash on the planet. And that triggered a thought for me right away was that my mom makes the best eggplant parmesan on the planet. Two different nationalities, but still, mom makes it best. So I thought I'd give my mom a call and see if she would tell you and me what makes her eggplant parmesan the best in the world. No, seriously, it is the best. Well, is this for your podcast, Mark? Yeah. Breakfast with Mark Daniels. We're finding out the one thing that your mom makes better than any other mom on the planet. I was just making meatballs and thinking of you, Mark. <laughs> I was wishing I could give them to you. <laughs> I'll take those, too. Well, Mark, if this is for your podcast, I'll be giving it away to the whole world, and it's a big, big secret. Mom, what secret? It, it's a recipe. It's food. This is from my mother, you know, uh, from Italy, and she gave this to my sisters and me. But I will give you one or two little tiny secrets. Is that okay? Little tiny secrets. Better than nothing. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Well, first of all, you get some nice firm eggplant. You slice them. You, you put a little salt and drain them. And then when you fry them, and that's another phase or two, uh, you treat everything lightly, not too much of anything, and keep a very nice light marinara sauce. And the rest is history, you know, a little cheese, but very, very uh, uncomplicated, truly. You wanted this for your birthday present, Mark, remember? Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I want that from us. That was a birthday wish, sure. Why is it, though, that when I go into a restaurant and order eggplant parmesan, first person I think of is you, but when I do get it served to me, generally it's okay, but why is it that restaurants can't match up to yours? I'm not sure, Mark. I think they try too hard. And they don't have my secret recipe. That's all. A secret recipe. I love. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Yes. I can smell. I can smell the meatballs cooking. I'll be over. Yes. Okay, dear. I can't wait to see you. So what I got out of that is what you got out of that. It's a secret. Why do we have secret recipes anyway? Wouldn't you want to share that with everyone? But quite honestly, if my mom had to go on Beat Bobby Flay, she would definitely beat Bobby Flay with her eggplant parmesan. My friend Jamie said that her mom makes the best brisket, but her mom would never give her the recipe. I don't get it. Maybe these moms are buying this stuff in the frozen food section at Whole Foods. I don't know. Now, my mother-in-law, on the other hand, makes the best potatoes au gratin. I don't know how she does it. Somehow, it's just the best. My kids will tell you that my wife makes the best shrimp scampi on the planet, and I would attest to that. Mom makes it best. What's the food that your mom makes that's better than anybody else's? You can comment on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And finally, a note to all novice do-it-yourselfers. Don't. I'm one of those novice do-it-yourselfers. You know, I like to put on the tool belt and pretend that I could fix everything and anything. But I can't. But I always try. I mean, if I do it myself, I'll save a lot of money. 
and I don't have to book an appointment with a tech person to come over a week from Tuesday to fix whatever problem it is I'm having. I could do it all right now. I had this little problem, or actually big problem, with my fridge. First thought was, let's buy a new one. No, that's too expensive. This can't cost much to fix and probably not a lot of time. So I spent a few hours on YouTube and probably watched about 13 different videos and diagnosed the problem. Thank you, YouTube. I looked up the part that it suggested I buy, and it was only $17 on Amazon.com. And I thought for $17 and free shipping prime the next day. I could have this repair licked in no time, and I'd be saving a pile of cash. So I ordered the part, put all my food in my neighbor's fridge, all the perishables, back and forth, back and forth, and waited till the next day when the part finally arrived. And now what inspired me to take on this repair myself was because it said repair, and they rate it. Easy, moderate, and difficult. This was rated easy. I thought if it's easy, my mom could do it. So I took the thing apart, tried to put the new part in. Long and short of it is... The new part did not fit as specified in the YouTube video. It wasn't that it was the wrong part. It's just that I couldn't figure out how to put the new part in. There's a knack for it. So now the whole day goes by and I still have my food over at my neighbor Donna's house. Have to run back and forth to get milk and eggs and whatever else. So I figured I'll call a guy and I didn't call a repair guy. I called a good buddy of mine from high school. He came over, he looked, he left and he fixed. It turns out that when I disassembled the old thing, I didn't take all of the old thing out. There was still a piece in there. In order to get the new thing in, you had to take the other piece of the old thing out. You get it, right? Anyway, my friend was in and out of the house quickly before anyone could get home. So I just claimed responsibility for fixing it. So I guess if you're a novice do-it-yourselfer like me, proceed at your own risk and have a high school buddy on standby. That'll do it for this episode of Breakfast with Mark Daniels, available on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Apple iTunes, Alexa, Buzzsprout.com, and now available on YouTube. Just search Breakfast with Mark Daniels. You can let Breakfast with Mark Daniels help grow your business. Advertise with us. For details, you can reach me at breakfastwithmarkdaniels at gmail.com. I hope when you listen, you share and like, so that'll help us grow even bigger. And I wish you a great Wednesday. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow for Breakfast with Mark Daniels.